Hey guys, Chad Hoover, iCast 2023. I am in the Bonafide booth with my man, Hans Newts. Hans is the lead designer at Bonafide, the brains behind some really amazing fishing kayaks over the years. And he's done it again with the new SKF or Skiff 117 from the folks at Bonafide. So Hans, I'm gonna turn it over to you. First and foremost, right out of the gate, the questions that people are gonna wanna know, length, width, weight, price. After that, then just take us through the features and why they are included in the boat. Absolutely, right. okay, yep. So the Skiff 117, it's 11 foot seven. Yeah, length, width, it's about 35 inches wide. Capacity 425, and it, which is which is great for yeah. a, a, a flats, you know, push pole boat. And then it's about 65 pounds, and that's car topping it without the seat. Okay. Take the seat off, 65 pounds. So the seat's about 11 pounds, about so 11 you're talking pounds. 70, mid 70s. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's good. And then the price is 12.49. Okay. And that includes the high rise seat and the deck pads and everything, uh, just not the bags. Gotcha. So. <laughs> so start back here with these new double handles and this cool look. Talk about what it's rated for, what it's ready for, and all that good stuff. And I'm going to move stuff around as okay. you talk. Yeah, absolutely. So. <clears throat> It's a push polling. It's kind of inspired by that push polling flats fishing platform. So it is a wide open platform uh, boat, but it's kind of a hybrid because we've included this really comfortable seat. Um, so what you see here is that, you know, you're going to have a, a, a wide open tank well. It's going to give you a lot of space for a cooler or crates, that sort of thing. And then at the back, we have extra, there's extra capacity back here. Um, that's going to be great for getting into shallows, getting in the, in the marsh grasses and it is power pole ready so you know add a bracket you're ready to go it can be motorized as well so you'd add add your aftermarket foot braces and steering kit and you can motorize this thing as well and you got rear access back here yep. you know even though you don't have a lot of internal storage because of the short gunnel but uh coming on up you've got this oversized tank well which according to the marketing stuff on the website fits a tundra 35 tundra is that right That's and then right. another Yeti cooler, the roadie will fit up in the front hole. That's right. So yeah. if you want to use it like a traditional flats boat and just ditch the seat all together because you're hopping up and hopping down, that's great. So, so yeah, yeah. Pick, so pick we, back up talking you know, about the boat here. Absolutely. The stability of this thing is it is the hybrid catamaran hole. So if you do if you do put a cooler here and stand on the cooler, you can use it for sight fishing. And that's one of the benefits of all this volume carried all the way back to the stern. Absolutely. And it's built into a package that's under 12 feet long, so it's really transportable. And, and one thing not a lot of people will notice, but in this boat, the, the tank well is a lot shallower, right? It it's is. not as deep, which means less water is going to flood into it. So you're going to be a, little, a lot more buoyant. So for those flats fishing, polling, or even skinny water, backwater bass fishing, that's going to be ideal. That's right. Yeah. A little shallower. It's, uh, it's going to drain really well. And this, this whole area is really just about, you know, adding the gear that you need. So we have extra lash down points, extra gear track here. And we have a gear track that's built for the, uh, the sidekick wheel system as well. So you can add that wheel system and that allows you to get, you know, get it down to the water and back really easy. Or you could just drag it, you, you know, a lot it. of times. It has twin skid plates. Twin skid so plates. Yep. You can drag it. Um, the thing, the other thing that we should talk about while we're back here is the drop skeg. Okay. And you know, if you're in shallows, um, you need, you need to be going through, you know, water that may be under you know three four inches deep mm -hmm. this thing has a skeg but it's built into the hull of the boat it's on a spring so you don't have to think about it you don't have to worry about it if you go over something that's really shallow it just pushes up into the boat and then drops back so you raise and lower it at the the right side of the boat over there and um, you can raise it up when you're ready to throw it in your truck bed for you folks off. that don't know what a skeg is think about a fin on a surfboard because that's pretty much the same concept. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I, I say skeg and I realize yeah. that you know, a lot yeah, of people not may not may not know. What a skeg is. But Did he say keg? A, a keg it, comes what with kind keg. of keg comes with a keg in it? <laughs> but the skeg is really important because this is a boat that can move across shallow stuff, but it can track. And tracking is really, really important when you're trying to get somewhere. Especially out in the open water in a flats situation. One thing I wanted to point out that maybe doesn't stick out to a lot of folks is in the uh, the tank well area or the, the area underneath the seat, you included the security bars, which yeah. is a pretty standard feature on a flats boat or a skiff yeah. so that you can put a cooler in there. You can cinch it down. And so you're saying that if you want to put a cooler in here, you can actually stand up on top of it to get that increased visibility. And there's enough volume in the boat to be stable enough to pull that off. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Let's talk about the seat, too. Okay. Yeah. Since you got it up here. Um, so this is the high rise seat. It, it comes off the boat. It can be added 
really easy. So if you're car topping or you know throwing it in your garage or whatever, seat comes off really easy. Um, but what's really cool about this seat is that it's high enough high enough off the boat that it is really comfortable if you're out all day. It's also a two position seat, so if it's if you want to go lower, if things get really windy, you can drop it down and put it in that lower position. And um, it's got you know it's got that all day comfort. Can I correct you on one thing? Yeah. It's actually a three position seat because one of the first things that happened when Austin saw this boat is he's like, what color is it going to come in? Because immediately. Think about duck hunting with this thing. So if you'll do me a favor and raise up on that seat back and fold it down, this is what we call the kickback position. So if you put the back down and you lean back and you lean this back a little bit, this is basically a big old layout blind. So it's a two position seat, but it's also a third position. If you kick that leg in, let this out a little bit, you're in the perfect duck killing, shooting them in the face position. So it's really a three position seat. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> And we're gonna we're gonna offer this in olive with the tan pads, which is pretty. It's kind of a. It's pre camo. Pre camo. Yeah, yeah, that's right. All you need is a rattle can and some leaves yeah. in your yard and a couple yes. sticks, and it'll be whatever camo pattern yeah. you want it to be. So, and along with the seat uh, being two position or three position, however you want to call it, um, I, we talked about the fact that it's removable, but also along the sides of the seat, we've we've left a lot of room for rigging. Because if you're out on the flats, you may have a push pole with you. Um, you may have, you know, you need a paddle park because you're going to be, you know, making those long casts. So you need a place to set your paddle down quickly, and uh, and maybe stake out. And then, uh, and so we have rigging points on both sides that accept some of the yak attack mounts and, and other other rod holders too. And and with it being something designed for the flats. You're gonna, in a lot of cases, be open water out in the wind. And so putting like a roto grip on there to click a couple rods into so that they're laid down flat would work out. Yep. Basically, you've created a blank canvas for the angler to do with what they want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Talk about talk about this cockpit, man, because this is this is a departure from anything yeah. most, of us, most of us have ever seen. Yeah, so, so what we did here is we wanted to make, I wanted it to be a space where you, when you stand up, you're not standing on scuppers, you're not standing on channels and things like that. So two nice large deck pads, but all of this is designed to push water away. So the scuppers are at the outside and down the middle on the underside is a nice big structural beam that, that gives the deck rigidity. So it really gives you the best of both worlds. You get the, the, the structure out of it for the boat, but then you also have a nice clean deck space. If you're, you know, if you're out hanging with your kids and you're, you're you know, using this thing as a diving board, it's a great spot for you know, that sort of casual day. Or if you're out doing some serious angling, it's it's a wide open deck for fly fishing and all that kind of stuff. One of the things I like about what I saw right out of the gate is, as a flats fisherman myself, and I used to do a lot of saltwater fishing before I moved, you know, to Tennessee and then ultimately to Alabama, is you get in and out of the boat a lot. So as you're getting in and out of the boat, these channels over here are great to capture that water and vacate it out of the cockpit. And then any water that does come over the top is gonna to run down this channel to the back of the under seat and go right out of those scuppers. So it's gonna be a super clean, fast draining deck. Now you do have a, a, a track up here yeah. with a big weird looking scupper. So talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, so we have, we have a center track and a cup holder up here, but the cup holder is also uh, a scupper that leads into a pocket that would be for your transducer. So if you did want to use a fish finder on, on something like this, maybe you like to fish lakes, you just want to go casual, you could add a fish finder here and the transducer mounts on the underside. And then we have more room up in front so that you can add, if you want to add a battery or some storage, you have plenty of room to lash something down up front for those bigger, like bigger adventures, right? Yeah, small so, tackle boxes, a couple bags, just see up to the biggest bag, everything, you know, all that stuff. Standard paddle boss for holding it down. A little bit different situation with the front handle up here. Talk to us about that. Yeah, absolutely. We have a new handle, a new grab handle um, that uh, it's it's our it's our handle. It's super comfortable, and we just thought that it would work really well with the with the SKF. Um, it's just a, a you know this whole area up here is designed to just displace water, you know, going up over things, and a, a little bit lighter weight and more you know a comfortable handle for the front. So I've never really had the issue with any of my bona fides, but one of the questions people ask a lot about this front, you know, fat grip handle is if you run into a rock, is it going to break? Things like that. So this new nose where you're just running into rocks yeah. and oysters and things like that, because this is going to be a grab and go riverboat. No matter yeah. how you slice it, 
it's going to be that perfect little crossover. If you like backwater fishing of any type, I think Absolutely. this thing is going to fit the bill. Um, is there anything that we missed that you can think of right off the top? Because I do have one thing I want to point out or at least ask you uh, before we're done. Okay. Anything else? I, I would just say that, uh, you know, I think the versatility of this of the skiff is uh, is really going to be, it's going to be great to see who buys it and how it's used because there's so many different waters that you can take this in. It is, you know, coastal flats fishing inspired, but it's going to go in a lot of different waters. Yeah, because for me personally, I think it's a backwater boat because flats yeah. and inshore are the backwaters of offshore. And so if you're a bass fisherman, you want to get into those skinny backwaters, this thing is perfect for that. But one thing that I noticed right out of the gate is the way that the deck is set up, all right? And we're doing a lot of backwoods, backwater fishing, a lot of throwing the kayaks on top of overland trailers and things like that. If you pop the seat off, is that gonna allow you to stack a couple of these things? So like if you got a family of four and you wanna get more boats in your truck, will it transport up on its edge well, things like that? So talk about yeah. that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. If you're, if you're moving a lot of boats and a lot of people, this is gonna be great because the seat comes off so quickly and you just, you know, you can turn these things up on edge and just stack them across the crossbars or they'll stack vertically as well. I'd, I'd probably use, throw a couple pool noodles in there yeah, just to and just to make them- Keep them from rubbing each other but raw. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, the, the profile of this thing, it's very, it's very similar so that they'll stack really well. Now this oversized scupper, it looks like it might or might, but the, does that also hold a water bottle? It does, yeah. It's, it's size for your, you know, your larger uh, koozie uh, thermos type, you know, type cups. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So All right guys, good. there you have it. Hans Newt's the man behind the design, the SKF 117 or Skiff 117. Check it out at bonafidekayaks.com. Check out their website, check all their socials. And as soon as we can twist his arm to get us one of these things, we'll get it out on the water and uh, get some real world testing in for all the things that we talked about in today's video. If we didn't cover something, do us a favor and uh, leave that comment in the comment section. I'll twist Han's arm, get him to come in the comment section. We'll maybe even do a, like a live stream you know, after yeah. the show and talk about this after people have kind of digested it and uh, answer your questions there. So thanks for tuning in. ICAST 2023, we'll see you guys in the next video.